Go to show a couple AVM cases, and uh, there was a, a couple that we uh, uh, treated recently. There was a delightful nine-year-old lad with a thank you, uh, with a uh, presented with a bad headache, left hand numbness, went to bed, uh, clumsiness progressed, and uh, had a left hemiparesis about uh, 12 hours later, uh, and uh, sensory changes, and oops, um, and he had this hemorrhage. Uh, maybe a little swelling there too, but uh, you know clearly uh, that hemorrhage. And uh, you can see on the MR uh, some hemorrhage, some edema. Uh, the MRA was suggestive, but not absolutely diagnostic of some of some stuff going on here. MRA and the angiogram showed a couple things that were interesting. First of all, I had. Uh, uh, AP view of the uh, right internal carotid artery, uh, arteries coming out, uh, going out the uh, through the extreme capsule, uh, going on up into the watershed of, of a dilated lenticular stripe uh, with some drains, probably the direct lateral going out here. And it's interesting. So you see an AVM that uh, probably should have had two spots to drain, uh, you know, one laterally uh, and, and one deep. And uh, we don't see the one that goes laterally, direct lateral, uh, but we do see the deep. And um, so we, uh, you know, uh, and here's the uh, internal uh, cerebral vein, this is a uh, galonic system. This is a lateral mag view of the uh, 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 internal carotid artery, the MCA uh, branches. And you can see it here. A little hard to tell if there's uh, some intranidal aneurysms, but uh, uh, didn't think so. Uh, didn't think so for a couple of reasons. One, his course, his clinical course. He had a little bit something that started in the evening, went to bed, and it was much worse in the morning. Uh, the size of the parenchymal hemorrhage, uh, and didn't see it really worked it out there. You go back, you know, you go back. You can, you know, you, you have to kind of noodle on these to be sure one of these isn't a. a uh, so we have a small, uh, small arterial uh, 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 venous uh, uh, malformation, and uh, you know, so uh, you know, I know, um, you know, Mike, uh, you're involved in this case, and. Um, you know what? Uh, you know are the issues that uh, that you think for a nine-year-old, uh, you know, in terms of uh, uh, treatment uh, options uh, and uh, modalities, uh, radio surgery. Uh, you know, uh, primarily. Uh, you know, I think uh, just to address embolization. Embolization would be hard because you have a single draining vein. You have uh, tiny little vessels here with a lot of uh, very, you know, high-priced real estate. Uh, for proximal occlusion, but what do you what do you think of it for a radio surgery candidate? How would you approach it? Um, well, first, I think I think this fellow like totally improved on his own. I mean, mm -hmm. it was the first thing from you know as the bleed went away, he got better. Yeah. And uh, I think the feeling was he was 12, he bled, he had this AVM that he should be treated. I mean, generally, I think if one could embolize and completely obliterate it that way, that would be fine. But I think in, in this case, we felt that was not a possibility. And then other possibilities are going to be to either do radio surgery or operate on it. Now, I think our feeling was because of the location of this, this would do better with um, radio surgery. Um, and as far as different modalities, I think we've usually done gamma knife. I and mean, we have, you know, valets, we have cyber knife. We've usually done gamma knife because it, I don't know, either, I think it's just easier to fuse the angio image to. Some of the other modalities don't have that. But we've always done with gamma knife. And uh, we did think that was appropriate, and that, that is what we uh, decide to do for him. How, how would you, in terms of these, how do you choose between, you know, Gamma Knife and Novalis? What's your, you know, kind of... And I've been doing Gamma Knife for all the AVMs. The issue, um, again, one of the key things is you have to have, you know, angio capability. Now, now, there are some, I guess, AVMs that are so clear on MRI or CAT scan, one could theoretically do it. In this case, I think you might have had trouble even seeing the nidus or defining it. So I, I thought you want to do with angiography. And uh, I don't know if, you know, Novalis may have such capability, but, you know, I know Gamma Knife, we've, we've really done all the, uh, or almost all the, uh, the AVMs with Gamma Knife. We have angio capability, and I, I just like the, Conformality and fall off. I think one could do it with Novalis. Cyber knife, I think they don't have good angio fusion capability. So for something like this, I wouldn't have done it. But, but uh, almost all our gam you know, uh, AVM radio surgery we're doing with gamma knife. And, um, um, you know, as far as him being nine, it was not, you know, not an issue. We've done pediatric cases. We have pediatric anesthesia there. They just, you know, knock them out. I mean, obviously, most of the gamma knife we do with uh, just local with sedation, but. 
But with the anesthesiologist there, you know, they knock him out, we put the frame on, it's not an issue. And, um, you know, he did well from that. And also because the thing was not very big, I, I think it expected to, uh, to disappear with radiosurgery pretty, pretty quickly. I mean, obviously the bigger it is, the longer it's gonna take. But I think, you know, given that this was not too big, we felt there was a very good chance of, of being obliterated with a single treatment and um, going away pretty fast. Yeah. The, the, um, here's a vertebral at the time, and you can see a shift in the watershed from the posterior, uh, the, of the uh, posterior medial, uh, posterior lateral choroidals. They're really shifted up and they're really, you know, quite robust. The AVM is out here. It's some ways away, but uh, you'll often see this uh, shift in the watershed. But it's important, you know, t uh, in an area to get, to get the whole AVM, uh, you know, on these. Uh, Mike, I wanted to ask you, it seems, you know, the, the, uh, 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 it seems dis disproportionate number of young, very young patients we see with, that I've seen with AVMs that bleed are deep AVMs, thalamic AVMs, and, and quite small. Is that just selection bias, or have you experienced that too, that the AVMs <coughs> that bleed in children tend to be a little different? Yeah. Andreas, uh, which mic? <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. No, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, I, I'm not sure about that, John, but uh, I think that uh, the answer probably is yes. There's certainly these fluffy, very poorly defined lesions like this one is, where you, you really have a hard time figuring out exactly where the nidus is. I, I was going to ask the panel where they, what their timing would be on this case. Are you, I mean, when do you do the radio surgery? You wait for the clock to go away, repeat the studies, get the get another imaging study, or how did you handle the case? Yeah, I, I mean. The way I would, you know, we usually wait like a few weeks, let the blood clot go away because if, like the way I like to, to plan the treatments, I have an angiogram, but I also like to see, see it as best as possible on MRI and some, you know, so if, if the blood clot is gone and, you know, usually within a few weeks it's gone enough that you can corroborate your, your target with the MRI because, you know, the angiogram gives you some confirmation you're doing, you basically have a plain lateral AP view, you're, you're targeting something, but it's important to, ha to try to compare that to the MRI and, you know, and or CT images. So I like to be able to see the thing. So I usually wait a few weeks. Also, he, you know, he got better. I mean, so you wait a few weeks, get better, the blood clot's gone, and, and then we did it. Now, if he was, you know, person, let's say, take him out of it. Let's say you have another person with AVM, they're having multiple hemorrhage. You know, sometimes you see them, they bleed two or three times in a short period, then it's a different matter. And then you're gonna be leaning towards surgery anyway. I mean, radio surgery, you gotta give them, you know, a year, two years, three years to work. So, I mean, in, in this case, I think we, you know, we waited several weeks, the blood clot went away, he, he got completely better, we did the treatment, and he's been fine since then. Yeah, I, I think that the, the point of how fast he got better with, with the, the clot is, is, is a good one, also suggesting a venous bleed. Uh, you know, I think if you put that much blood in, in, in somebody acutely over, you know, two or three minutes or a minute, uh, you know, they don't do well, but if they ooze over 12 hours, it's, it's, it's a different story. And I think that's, uh, I, I think that's an important uh, uh, point that you can have, if, if that's so, you can also have parenchymal hemorrhages. The fact that the parenchymal hemorrhages don't necessarily mean that they are uh, intranidal aneurysms or feeding artery aneurysms. Uh, I think you know it, the, 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 they're likely to be, but the, they can also be venous, particularly if you're missing a, a vein there. And I think that's important because of the rebleed rate. Uh, you know, an intranidal aneurysm or a feeding artery aneurysm, I think, is is probably probably different. Uh, here's a, a related case: 52-year-old uh, lady who had a, a large uh, thalamic hemorrhage. Uh, you know, casting both uh, ventricles, and she was. Uh, Protracted course in the in the ICU, and she just uh, very long is is, is Ramon Rack here? No, uh, but uh, or, or Alan uh, Alan Mechanic. They were both uh, involved uh, in this lady, and she has a very large thalamic hemorrhage, casting both ventricles. Uh, you know, quite large. She had a very very stormy course, uh, and you know this was uh, this is something a little bit different, and uh, you know this is. Uh, uh, one of the first cases I uh, uh, assisted uh, Jonathan with in, in using uh, uh, onyx, and you see here the posterior uh, medial choroidal going up with this aneurysm, and then you see some draining veins that are slow to fill. So it's kind of a it's kind of a choroidal AVM in the uh, velamen or positum. Uh, you know, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, 
uh, you know, this case, I know you have a lot of uh, Onyx experience. What, uh, what would be your thoughts on, on this case in terms of its, its rebleed rate, in terms of it, the approaches to it? I mean, I would, I would approach it the same way that you did. Um, I sort of, I think, you know, Bruce Sablo and I, I think we, at our shop, we would tend to do exactly what you did. I've, in Phoenix, we would do an angiogram, look for any high-risk feature, which clearly we've identified. Um, I would try to embolize that. Uh, if I wouldn't go for a cure. Uh, I, I do favor onyx uh, mm -hmm. as well, um, but in posterior fossa EVMs, I, I'm also a little bit more in favor of glue. Mm -hmm. But I think for this, I would definitely try to embolize that high-risk feature, let them recover, repeat the MRI, repeat the angiogram in six to eight weeks, and then you know, take it from there. Yeah. So the, um, you know, uh, the, uh, there's a lot of discussion about feeding artery aneurysms, intranidal aneurysms. You know, it's often very hard to uh, 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 figure out where, you know, if, if they are just lumps or bumps. Uh, you know, so here's another, just a, another picture of how ugly that is. Uh, and, you know, it, it, uh, uh, the, the aneurysms, these are probably pseudoaneurysms when they look this big in clot. And, uh, you know, having followed a few of these because I was, was afraid to, to step up and do them, you can watch them get bigger. Uh, on the CT uh, enhancement, and the, as the clot resorbs, they get bigger. Um, so, you know, they can sometimes stabilize, as, as this one did, the velomer positum. She got, uh, uh, she got her angio finally when, uh, when she was transferred, but uh, this was, was here and very ugly. And you can see, uh, you can see this is the uh, vein here going back into the galonic system. So it's really a high pressure system. This, the, the time that you see, if you see the, you know, when the pressure is very, very high, like in brain death, you never do see the contrast in the vein. Okay, so the, when you see the vein is inversely proportional to the pressure in the artery. And so this is, uh, this pressure in these arteries are actually higher than the other ones because there's no, they're just, they're at a, at a stump. It's as if you stuck a needle in. Uh, and there's no runoff, uh, you know, and so the pressure in these is quite high. It, if you actually measure it, with, uh, you know, and, and the bleed rate uh, for many of these uh, is, is associated with that, at least uh, 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 that's what we found, intra intranidal pressure. And that's also associated with size. Small AVMs tend to have a high pressure. Maybe they couldn't stretch, that's why they didn't grow. Uh, the veins didn't stretch, but whatever. The pressure is high in this. This is very ugly. I think it has a very high bleed rate. Uh, you know, I was very, uh, you know, d d delighted to having joined John. He put the catheter up there, glued the vessel. Okay, aneurysm all gone. And uh, that was, uh, uh, you know, just to show that it's, it's all gone and all the views and follow-up, you know, shows it's gone. This is the follow-up uh, and, and I think the delayed follow-up. Uh, and you can see here, you know, you can see here route into venous phase here. There's nothing here. That vein's gone, and uh, this is the follow-up angio. So it was, uh, you know, I think these these uh, here's two cases. One uh, one with an intra with a feeding artery aneurysm that presented with a devastating bleed. Uh, you know, tried very hard to that bleed tried very hard to kill her, um, and uh, uh, then uh, uh, with an aneurysm on the feeding vessel. The other one a venous bleed. Whereas Mike said you had to you had to examine him quick to see the to to see the um, to see the issues. I'm not a big believer in onyx cures unless you're doing multiple catheters and you have clear uh, onyx into the venous system at the end. Um, I'm very reluctant to, to, to have cured, you know, consider that a cure. I would you know, get an MR if I see contrast. I just, yeah, I, I, my, my approach is very similar to Phoenix. I just would not consider that a cure. I mean, I think that's the short end of this. What would you, what would you do? What would I do further? Well, I think you know you'd have to. I would follow them with serial angiograms. I would counsel them on radio surgery. Okay. Um, the question is, are you going to treat this? Do you consider this a cure? Angiographic cure for me. If I saw enhancement on MR, I would I would gamma knife this. Uh, do, do you have Do you have concerns about the uh, since in development or positive and the commissures of, of the fornix are coming there about memory issues? I mean, it, it's Absolutely. right. Absolutely. So you would, you would treat a enhancement, neg angiogram negative, but enhancement on MRI. On follow-up. I would follow, you know, I would oh, follow basically follow. Until follow if there is enhancement. Correct. If there is enhancement, then angiogram. Correct. Okay. I've had one, quote, unquote, onyx cure. Yeah. But that was in a one and a half centimeter 
AVM that had a true nidus, okay? I cured it, and then six months later, not surprisingly, when I re-angio, there was a little nidus left, and we zapped it with radiosurgery. This, I think, is actually different. There's no nidus here. This is a wacky kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. There was one little vessel that went into a little aneurysm, and there was barely this draining vein, and I glued the aneurysm, I took that little vessel going into the aneurysm. I actually think that it's now a low pressure or whatever it is. I never documented a nidus. So like I don't quite I don't know if this is like a fist like just a like an AV fistula with a little aneurysm or what it is. Um, I think we angioed this lady six months later and it was dead clean. And you know, I mean I think that's you know, the problem with an MRI looking for GATO enhancement is because she's had a hemorrhage and because there is now onyx in there, I mean, there's gonna be, on the flare, you're gonna see, you know, and even with GATO, you may see a little enhancement, but I, I, I mean, we not, can do more angios. I'm not- I was like, just gonna say, would you not angio her at, at three yeah, years? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, just because your six months yeah. angio is negative, would you consider her yeah, cured? I kinda did, but, you know, again, I, I don't think there's data to say she's not cured. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think bringing her back in, in three years um, you know, to do an angiogram is not wrong or five or ten, but um, but but I don't I don't think there's any data to suggest that if six months after this you have a dead clean angio, uh, I don't think there's any data to suggest that that that, that will open up. So but so the spatial way. so the spatial and temporal resolution of this is that below ninety below about eighty microns you won't see the vessel. It just everything is blurred. So an angiographic negative, even after surgery, even after uh, in, in intercession by God, uh, will only see down to 80 microns. Mm -hmm. So you can't really discuss that below 80 microns. Uh, and so also the temporal resolution, if it has to go a long way to get there through an extra you know, 100 centimeters of, of collateral to backfill, it, it will be in the venous phase. So you won't, I mean, the hallmark is early draining vein. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the, the idea that there's this, you know, AVM, no AVM, uh, <clears throat> you know, a continuum on the treatment, I think is, is uh, if you have a lot of faith that these angiograms are seen down to the capillaries, that, that, that there's nothing that's shunting, you know, from that vein on, on any one of the 20, that, you know, you'll get there. But otherwise, I think, uh, I mean, th I think this is kind of as good as we get. Uh, and, uh, you know, do I think it's, I mean, I would I'd say it's angiographically gone. Does it need to be followed? Yes. Uh, I don't think we should make the same mistake that's been made in the past, but say because, because we've done something to you, go live your life normally and forget that you ever had anything. I think that was the, the, the approach 20 years ago. Yeah, I, I just don't feel, I mean, I agree with I that. Think I think three year follow up is reasonable. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I mean, that's yeah, a I wouldn't. To do. I wouldn't write her. I wouldn't say she's cured. I would be. I'd just be concerned. I would follow her. On this closely. particular one, you know, we don't have a lot of experience with onyx. Right. Or like exactly. shearing onyx AVMs. On this particular one, I think this thing is gone because I think it was so low flow and 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 I never saw nitus. Mm -hmm. So I don't even understand exactly what this lesion. Did you do is. a six month? You just, so you did a six, six month, month, month was clean, clean, and that was fine. Clean. Yeah. So, but a, a three year is a very reasonable thing to do. But I, I don't think there'll be anything there. Is that's just my guess. I would agree. I'd use a two or three year angiogram. I'd use early training thing as the criteria. Sure. Yeah.